Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to The Art of Podcasting. Um, we're so glad you're here and you could make it and be with us today. My name is Sarah. I work with Building Beats, a nonprofit organization based in New York, providing music and podcasting education to youth in New York City, in LA, and ever expanding. Uh, the Art of Podcasting is a collaboration with New York Music Month Extended Play, an initiative of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. Through the New York Music Month Extended Play Initiative, we'll be offering free music production and podcasting workshops through May. Be sure to check out the amazing lineup of workshops on our website. I'm gonna drop some links in the chat so you can look at those. Let's see. Now, today's workshop is making a press kit. During this workshop, you'll learn how to develop a press kit that shines above the rest and gets the attention on your podcast. Your teaching artist will be Jeff Umbro, founder of Podglomerate, a company that produces, distributes, and monetizes podcasts. Podglomerate podcasts have been featured on every major podcasting app and have been written about in dozens of publications, including the New York Times, The Guardian, Forbes, Vulture, Food and Wine, and Variety. Their hosts have been featured on hundreds of podcasts and radio shows, many topping the charts in their own right, and a handful of instances have been featured on national television programs. Prior to launching Podglomerate, Jeff had his hands in audience growth and business development for companies like Serial Box, Vote Please, Product Hunt, Talk Show, and Goldberg McDuffel Communications. Now, if you have any questions or if you're experiencing any technical issues, feel free to send me a private chat and let me know, or you can just send in the chat and let me know what's going on. Um, but you know, enjoy the workshop and Jeff, take it away. Thank you. Uh, it's so funny. I never actually know like which version of my bio is, is out there. So I'm always surprised. Um, but yeah, I started the Poglomerate back in 2016. Um, prior to that, I actually worked in book publicity. So I was uh, a book publicist at an independent firm that all of the publishers would hire um, if they needed extra help with an author because the author was brand new or because nobody had ever heard of them or because they were so big that they needed just an extra set of hands. Um, and I started the company thinking that audio publishing is actually very similar to uh, book publishing. And it, the same exact principles were going to affect podcasting that hit the book world, where you have a bunch of publishers that are just stretched really thin. And uh, there's you know, a need for like outside firms to come in and lend a helping hand, um, which is exactly what we do at the Podglomerate. Um, we produce, distribute, and monetize podcasts, and uh, there's just a lot of pieces and layers to that. Um, but one of the things that we do in the fastest growing piece of the company is that people will hire us to do growth campaigns on behalf of the podcast, which uh, for us means five things, publicity, marketing, cross-promotion, merchandising, and paid opportunities. So I'm going to walk you guys through just kind of like what those five tiers mean and then how to actually like execute on them um and i'll give you a bunch of examples and i will do my best to bring in examples of like a news show or a uh like scripted fiction show um but generally speaking and everybody is a little bit different or nuanced in their approach to this goal but generally speaking, most people want to grow their audience as large as they can. There are some people who want to grow an audience that's just very specific and particular to like the type of people that they want to listen. Um, an example of that would be a business podcast that is looking for new clients, using the podcast as a vehicle to do that. Um, something like a news show or a scripted fiction show uh, is probably looking for as wide of an audience as possible so that you can monetize that through advertising, through premium content sales or something like that. So assuming that the goal here is to just grow like a large and targeted audience for whatever show you're producing, there's a few tried and true ways to do that. Step one is under the publicity banner. And that is most relevant to like the namesake of this talk in terms of like building your press kit and like how, what, who, et cetera. Uh, so the main goal of writing up a press kit and like running a publicity campaign is to get earned media. And what I mean by earned is stuff that you haven't paid for out into the world. 
So you want to go and have people write about your show or interview you as the creator of the show or the host of the show, or you want to be included in one of those lists that's like the best podcasts of 2021 or whatever it is. Uh, there are a few ways that you can go about doing that. Uh, you want to create a press kit, which can mean a lot of different things. To me, that means a synopsis doc, a press release, a biography of the talent or the people that are involved in the show. Uh, if it's like a long-standing show, maybe you want to do some kind of um, like episode list or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. This is a podcast that we created called Storybound. Storybound is a uh, show where we bring on authors. We have them read an essay, a poem, a short story, and then we have a musician come and score the episode. So for example, we had Juno Diaz read uh, one of his short stories from his collection, uh, Drown, I believe, and we had it scored by a band named Ilabamba. We have had Mitch Album come and read an essay, and that episode was scored by a woman named Maya Wynn. So it's a really cool like collection. Um, it has a lot of like big names attached to it. This is the synopsis document from season one. So you can see, you know, uh, Deke Shibasu, Nathan Hill, Mitchell Jackson, Mitch Album, Lydia Yuknovich, Matt Gallagher. Uh, so I, I mention all of that because one of the things that you want to do when you're making your show is you want to try and build some of these like news hooks into the DNA of the show itself. So Michael, when you're doing your scripted show, and you are going out and looking for actors or comedians to actually like voice these things, a typical strategy for a lot of people would be to find famous like names or influencers to actually be in the show as a draw for the future so that that person can activate their audience to become listeners. Um, that's, I mean, that's, you can do that with the news show as well. Uh, like you basically want to think backwards and say like, what is something that you would listen to and why? And then you want to create that show. So that's step one, just build it into the DNA and really like think backwards for what your goal is. And then step two for a synopsis document is put the who, what, where, why, and when right into one document that somebody can look at at a glance. So this show tells you right off the bat what it is it's a radio theater program. Who is behind it? It's hosted by Jude Brewer. And later on, you'll see that like we partnered with Lit Hub Radio for this show. So the who is down here, the bios. So you have Jude, you have Literary Hub, you have the podglomerate. Uh, so this tells you right off the bat, like who's involved in creating it. And we made it very clear who's actually in the show. So that's the who. The what is the radio theater program. The why is, uh, you know, at its heart, Storybound is a storytelling podcast and we particularly appeal to those who enjoy fiction podcasts, such as, as well as those who enjoy tender human interest podcasts, such as, or who just enjoy a good story. So that's kind of the why. This is super ephemeral in terms, I'm sorry, this is super like unique to this show. If it's a, like a news podcast, then the, the why would be like, so that you can learn more about your, your everyday surroundings or what's happening in the world or whatever. Um, in this case, this is just entertainment. So that's all we're trying to convey. Um, the who, the what, the where, uh, and we, we have that down at the bottom, which is just episodes will begin running weekly on this date. Um, and you can listen wherever you listen to podcasts. So just think that through like the who, what, where, why, and when. And then this then becomes a document that you can share with anybody at any point that will convey that information. So that is kind of what you're looking for. It's very similar to a press release. This is a press release. It's basically all of the same information. It's presented a little bit differently and it is uh, providing a little bit more context information as well. Like, Here's a quote from the like associate publisher 
of LitHub, Justin Alvarez. And this will give like a little bit more context as to like, why is LitHub doing this? What do they get out of it? Like, how will that impact what we're trying to do? So, I mean, you guys have probably all seen press releases. Uh, this is something that you can send to the people who you think might be interested in the show. So who might that be? Well, we have a few different ways that we can look into that. So you want to create a list of people who might be interested in writing about your podcast. So this is one such list. These are people who write about podcasts. And you can see I broke it down by recommendation. So like lists and reviews, trends. So business stories in the podcast space, podcast education and tutorials, and then trade publications. And you can actually see here like there's a bunch of, but there's a bunch of names of people who write about this stuff every day who uh, are um, like probably going to be people that like might be interested in your podcast. And what you should be doing in these situations is not just sending like a blast email to everybody on this list, but you should be like poking around and Googling like what is the last thing that Shreya Sharma wrote? for inside podcasting. You know, it, it, you'll very quickly realize that she writes a weekly podcast newsletter called Inside Podcasting. And she often does like a, a collection of new shows that are out that week. So this is an example of something where you can pitch her and say, hey, I have this new podcast that I just created. It's a, fic a comedy fiction podcast. Uh, I think it will do X, Y, and Z, which you know, because you just wrote your, you know, synopsis document and your press release and you can send it to her. I, uh, you know, you have people at the New York Times who do lists of podcasts surrounding various subjects. You have people at newsletters that will write about um, like very particular kinds of podcasts, like Hurt Your Brain talks about science podcasts. So if that's something that you're trying to do, like this is a guy that you want to know about. So I, I, I you know, you guys can poke around and kind of build those up on your own. I call those media pipelines. But the short version is that that will be a document that is singular in one place where you can go and say, I have a show that might be interesting to these people for these reasons, and I'm going to send them some information about the podcast. This is a page that I call a comp podcast list. And you can go and basically take all of the different podcasts that are similar to the one that you've created, and you can reach out to them. If you're just getting started, maybe you just want to like introduce yourself, say that you're new to the podcasting space and you want to like, you know, get some advice from them or you're a fan of their show and you want to let them know that. And hey, I'm also making a show that's pretty similar. Maybe you'd like to listen to it one day. Maybe you can share it on your social media. Maybe we can do some kind of cross promotion. Maybe I can interview you on my show, something like that. Um, but basically this allows you to identify who those people are. So that is, I'm kind of um, all over the place, but that is like the step one is the publicity. So you're trying to get earned media placements for your podcast. And those can look like a bunch of different things such as interviews with the talent behind the show, reviews of the podcast or lists of people or lists of podcasts surrounding a certain topic. So for example, you could pitch this as like, hey, do you wanna do a list of storytelling podcasts or a list of book podcasts or something like that? And Storybound would be perfect. Step two is marketing. And that's a very big, broad term. But what I mean specifically by that is that you want to use your existing platforms so website, newsletter, social media, apps, if they're available, maybe you're doing this in tandem with like work or something and they have all of these platforms. Um, you wanna be able to take your show and use those platforms to promote it 
with a very clear and concise call to action, which in this case would be download and subscribe to my podcast. Like this is something that you might be interested in listening to. Here is all of the information that will allow you to decide that. And now here's how you go and listen to it if that's something that you wanna do. The third tier is called cross promotion. And that has to do with the comp podcast list that I just showed you guys. But basically you can go up to the people who uh, like write, uh, I'm sorry, who, who make similar podcasts to you and there's a lot of really easy ways you can find those people, by the way. Like if you look at my screen right now, this is the page for Storybound on Apple Podcasts. I'm going to just scroll to the bottom. And there we go. These are the top podcasts in arts. These are the top podcasts uh, from the Poglomerate, which is my company. And then these are shows that people also subscribe to. So people who are already listening to Storybound also subscribe to these shows. So now right off the bat, I have a list of places that I can start with. You can also go on websites like Chartable or Pod Sites, and you can start to like dig in and see what kind of similar shows there are. You can Google like top book podcasts. You can get a hundred results from something like that. Uh, you know, there's, if we're doing this with like fiction or news podcasts, there are thousands of results that you guys can find. But basically you build that list and then you reach out to the people who are on that list and you start to think creatively about the different ways that you can like help promote your show. So you can do something like an interview or an interview swap. You can do something like an audio swap. So, you know, if you run an ad for my show, I will run an ad for your show. Or you can do something like a feed drop. Like, hey, why don't you publish an episode of my show on your feed and I'll do the same for you. And then depending on how like sophisticated you want to get, there are a lot of platforms out there that you can go to like actually track attribution for all of these things. So you can look at the data behind like how effective each of these different campaigns are. And then you can go and say like, hey, this was super effective. I'd like to do it again. Or this didn't really work. I think I'll move on. So the third bit is called retailer merchandising, or at least that's what I call it. Uh, so I'm gonna share a different screen. Um, so this is Apple Podcasts. So this is just the front page of the website or the app. Uh, and you can see you have these carousel images up here you have these new and noteworthy slots here. You have different categories. You have this feature for this Apple original podcast. You have all this stuff for building resilience and meditation of mind and everyday self care. You have these various collections. So there's a lot of stuff here that you can unpack if you really start to think about it. Uh, I won't dig into like the politics behind this today, but there's a lot of them. Um, but in general, if you're poking around on this front page of Apple Podcasts, you can see that there are things like, uh, you know, new shows that didn't really exist before or that have new seasons that are out. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So you can start to say like, oh, maybe there's a reason why all of these shows are being featured right now. Like building resilience, meditation in the mind, everyday self-care. All of these are shows that are like in one way or another, helping people with their mental fitness. So this is something that like, had I been thinking about this a month ago and I had a podcast that had to do with mental health, then maybe I would have like sent a note to Apple or to any of the other podcasts that are out there and said, Hey, I am, you know, thinking that you might be interested in running one of these campaigns. Uh, maybe you um, would be interested in featuring my show, which focuses on, you know, these various topics. And obviously, you know, this is one of those situations where you might not necessarily have like an email to reach out to at Apple or at Spotify or any of these other websites. 
but I think you'd also be pretty surprised to know like how many of these outlets are just publicly listed. So if you just do some Googling then you'll be able to find a lot of these different email addresses, um, you know, there's a, it, it, you're already talking to a bunch of other podcasters because of the, the cross promos that we just talked about. So maybe you can ask advice from those guys. Um, like, I, I guess what I'm getting at is that you should treat each of the apps the same way you're treating everything else for editorial. Um, you know, I can't really give you like emails or anything for some of these, but you know, they're not hard to find if, if you like are motivated to do so. So that's something that would be really helpful. And there's 20 different apps that do these kinds of features. There's Apple, there's Spotify, there's Amazon Music, there's iHeart, there's Pandora, there's SiriusXM, there's CastBox, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. You know, I could keep going. So there's all that. Then, of course, you have paid opportunities. Uh, there are, I think, seven or eight podcast apps that will do paid features. Um, there are newsletters that will do paid features, there's social media ads, there's audio spots on other podcasts. Uh, assuming you don't have a budget to do that, because most people don't, um, there you know, are just creative ways that you can go about it. So I, I just want to mention that because that's something that like is really effective if you do it right. But I won't really dig into it because like, you know, I, I assume that we're looking at like organic earned media today. Um, cause that's a whole different ball game. If you're going to be spending money for advertising on behalf of your show. Um, but the short version here is that all of these different things, especially done in tandem in like a holistic approach will be really, really beneficial for your podcast. But the number one thing that you guys have to think about from day one is what is the goal of what I'm trying to do here? Like I don't want to just email a thousand people because somebody told me that I need to email them. I want to really sit back and think like my goal is to get book riot to do a list of top book podcasts. And I want to make sure that when, and if they do that, they're aware of story bound and they're going to like include that in the list. So now I need to go out of my way to find out who at book riot might be responsible for writing that list. And you can see who maybe wrote that list in the past or who's like the arts and entertainment writer at a website or something like that. You find their email, most of which is available on Twitter or by Googling. And then you send them one of these synopsis documents or whatever you guys put together. It doesn't have to be that. And you let them know, hey, like I thought this might be of interest to you. Like, please let me know if I can share any more information. Like I'm a big fan. Uh, I'd love to, you know, work with you guys to, to contribute something. Um, let me know if I can provide more info. So step one is just figuring out kind of like what your goal is. And then step two is working backwards to do that. Uh, a lot of what I talked about today um, is available all over. You can find it from me on my LinkedIn page. It's just Jeff Umbro. Uh, I have a newsletter on LinkedIn. You can go and like read a I've written 50 articles that all cover these exact things, um, but I'm not the only one. There's 20 people out there who have written a lot of similar articles. So if you just start Googling around, you'll be able to find it. Um, and I'll, I'll connect with everybody as well. Uh, and, you know, over at Building Beats and let them know like what links they can include in the, the footnotes and in the bios and everything. Um, because it's all, it's all mostly public info. You know, there's not really that many secrets. It's just a matter of where to find it. So, um, but yeah, that's like in a nutshell, kind of how you should go about building an audience. Um, I wanted to show you guys some examples of like the fruits of the labor when it comes to doing everything that I just talked about. Um, and then I want to open it up to some questions. So, and just keep in mind, you know, these are all little tiny bits and pieces of, of the overall pie. And these are things that you guys will, you know, figure out over time doing it. Um, what I'm showing you is, is obviously an example of like a really successful campaign that we ran. So, you know, this is like, uh, this is not going to happen every time. Um, but we started when we launched Storybound by partnering with LitHub in part because LitHub has a huge audience of people who love books and we wanted to take advantage of that. 
So one of the things that we did when we partnered with LitHub is we got them to agree to publish every episode of Storybound on their website. So you can see, no matter what we do, we're gonna get at least one piece of media for every episode. And in this article, this is basically just a rehash of that synopsis document. You can listen right from the website. You can find it up here. There's all of the other stuff in here. This is another thing that is obviously not necessarily going to be available to everybody, but you know, it's an idea. Maybe you can partner with a smaller website or something. You know, it is not unattainable, especially if you're spending a lot of time building really good content. And it sounds like all of you guys are. So take advantage of that, you know? Own the, the fact that you guys have put a ton of time and energy into this. So next, uh, Phoebe Lett at the New York Times does a list every week or two that digs into a certain aspect of podcasting. Um, so I'm just pulling up her, her byline here. And you can see she just recently did something on climate change podcast to listen to for climate change info, can't manage your money, there's a podcast for that, um, dating podcast to make you feel better about your love life, music podcast for kids. So what I'm getting at is that she is a, this is a public figure uh, at a huge institution who is doing lists of podcasts for the, the website and the magazine and the newspaper. Um, you can find her info just by Googling and you can come up with an idea like best book podcast or something. And you can even try and push it for some kind of like holiday. Like we just had World Book Day in, May, in April. So like, you know, pitch the New York Times, do a list of five podcasts to listen to for World Book Day and put your podcast on the list. You know, it's not always going to be fruitful, but sometimes it will be. Uh, in this case, we got really lucky and um, she included Storybound in just like a roundup that she did a couple of years ago when we launched. So uh, it was really cool to see, honestly. Um, here it is. Uh, and then you can even see, like, she wrote, um, where is it? Yeah. Uh, and the result is a private reading just for you. So then I was able to take that line, which is in the New York Times officially, and I can pull that out and use that whenever I'm reaching out to the next set of media and say, the New York Times said this was a private reading just for you. Like, that's a really impressive thing to say. So, and you can do that with, I don't know, your local newspaper, if they write about your podcast, you can do that with, you know, Joe Schmo's blog down the street. Like it, it's all about kind of creating that whether it's, you know, real or not. And most of the time it is, you know, you have to just kind of like present it in such a way that it looks like it's validated by a third party, uh, makes it look as impressive as you can. And you just put that out in the world. And then that creates a little bit of a snowball effect. So now we have this podcast. Every episode is published on LitHub. The New York Times has had a mention of it, and we get to use that when we're reaching out to people. And I said, you know, Jude is the host of this show. He's from Portland, Oregon. This is probably a pretty cool story for Portland. So we pitched it to the Willamette Week, which is a magazine out of Portland. Uh, Willamette is a town right outside of Portland. It's a suburb. And, you know, we were able to get an article there that wrote all about the show because of the local angle of the show. This is a story about a hometown kid who, you know, wrote a who made a podcast that was featured in the New York Times, gets every episode in LitHub. So it's it's a very cool like way to go about it. And now this is something where Jude is able to like share this at home with the social media or whatever. And you know, his community recognizes Willamette Week because they're like growing up reading it. Here's an example. This is also a Portland based company. Um, this is very particular to the music side of things because this is a music magazine and we were able to like really like 
hammer home the idea of music as like a secondary piece. This is a book podcast ultimately, but we also have a unique musician in every episode. So we took advantage of that and we like really hammered it home with this music magazine. Then that became the topic of the article. We had Jack Resider on the show. He runs a podcast and he hosts a podcast called Darknet Diaries, which is very popular. It's about like the internet hacking community. So we had him writing that same presented on the show and we made an episode out of it. He shared it with his community on Reddit. And we were able to get a bunch of like comments and clicks and everything else because of this. We found a book podcast called Bookable. We reached out to them and said, hey, we'll run an episode of your show on our feed if you do it for us. And then here you go. We have an episode of Storybound on the Bookable feed. This is a podcast publication who did an article on the fact that we successfully launched this podcast and found a huge audience. So this is an example of us taking all of the other things that we've already done and helping to snowball it moving forward. This is a, a smaller podcast trade publication who mentioned the podcast when it first launched. This is another music blog. This is basically just a republishing of the press release, but you know, there's dozens, there's thousands of websites just like this that you guys can reach out to. Um, and that's just like a, a small taste. Uh, there's a, there's no wrong way to do this. There's a thousand, um, like right things that you can do. And it just all goes back to the idea of like, what would you guys want to read? What would you like to see? And then work backwards to try and like put it in front of the right people to make that happen. So. That's pretty much it for me. I'm happy to answer any questions for you guys. Uh, I, I'm sure I could find more to talk about if you want, but uh, that's like the the very big picture idea of, of kind of what goes into what I call a growth campaign, what other people call like a press campaign. Um, there's a lot of pieces to it. And, and like I said, you know, we just kind of scratch the surface. Um, but if you guys are interested in learning more then I can point you all to a bunch of resources. Does anyone have any questions or anything? You're one step ahead of me, Marcus. All right, um, in terms of how do you get shows funded? Uh, it depends. Um, I hate to keep saying that, but you know, there's just so many layers to this. Uh, are you able to uh, bring on like huge name talent to the show? Uh, are you going out and like doing something that's that's you know crazy unique that would get the attention of a platform like Apple or Spotify? Um, there's just a lot of different layers to that. Um, step one, though, is honestly just like I, I mentioned this before, but think about your goals. Like if your goal is to make money podcasting, um, <laughs> then I would probably say, you know, sit down and, and consider that a little bit. Um, it's the same thing as, as like YouTube or, or any other creative industry. Like if you want to be an Instagram influencer, uh, you know, there are a lot more people trying to make a business out of it than successfully making a business out of it. Um, and that's not to say that it's not possible, but it's like, you know, you should think think about why you're doing it and how you plan on monetizing it. Uh, the most common way of people monetizing shows are through advertising. There's some people that will do it through premium content. There's some people who will do it through donations or through grant writing or through live events. Um, all of these are, are things that you can think about when it comes to getting your show funded. Um, but the reality is that most shows will not get funded unless they have some kind of existing built-in audience. Um, and 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to talk to you about this if you want to send me a message. Um, but, but just generally speaking, um, you know, you, you need some kind of draw because that's really where the monetization side is going to come from. And most people are going to need to see a return on their investment if they're going to fund a show. So in terms of different ways to promote the show uh, with like a smaller podcast, um, I would honestly probably avoid hiring somebody unless you have like a, a bigger budget. Um, there are a lot of people, and I can point you to these if you email me, there are a handful of people who, who will do smaller campaigns, but I think that you're probably, you know, better off putting that money towards like paid advertising on, on like really curated shows. Um, you know, find other music shows that are, you know, internationally focused like yours uh, and, you know, buy an ad trying to uh, like promote your show on, on this similar one. Um, again, there's a lot of layers to this and, and I'm happy to like kind of walk you through this over email or something. But, um, but yeah, there, there are a few people who are, are starting to kind of pop up and offer these services. But um, yeah, it's a new industry. Well, it's not a new industry, but it's a new industry compared to like music and publishing and everything else. So this is something that is is just starting to kind of pepper the, the world. So if you find anybody who's doing this kind of work, let me know. I'm also looking. Advice for getting cover art for the podcast made. So uh, cover art is hugely important for a hundred reasons. Um, number one is 99% of the time, it's going to be the first thing that people like see and associate with your podcast, which is weird. You don't think about that because it's an audio medium, but this is like the first thing that's going to show up in people's apps, on your website, on social media, like that's what people are going to see and immediately recognize for your show. So you really want to put a lot of energy into this. Um, and you know, you don't necessarily have to go and like hire somebody to do it. Although go for it if that's like within your budget. Um, there are a lot of amazing artists that you can hire on anything from like 99 designs and Fiverr to any other, you know, big design website. Um, but what I would really pay attention to is how does it look as a thumbnail? Because the majority of people who are going to be seeing your podcast are going to be seeing it when it's like this big. Uh, you know, think of how you, like a podcast looks on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or something like that. Um, so you want to make sure that it's very clear and legible at a thumbnail. Um, and that's the number one advice that I would give you is make sure that this is visible and like makes sense to anybody looking. Uh, the second set of advice when it comes to cover art is make it as cool as you can. Uh, like vibrant colors or unique ways of formatting the show or whatever. I, I think that the best way to go about it is to look up other podcast art that you love, create like a, a little mood board or something, take screenshots, pop it all over there. Um, and like really just like get it all on one page. And that is something that you can use to share with whatever designer you're working with, if that's you that's designing it, you can use that as like a, um, an inspiration. Um, but, but yeah, make clear, concise, vibrant, uh, and looks great when it's really tiny is, is really what I would like pay attention to. Um, and just like everything else, there's a thousand little pieces of nuance here. Um, Pacific Content is a production company out of Canada and they wrote a blog post about podcast cover art a couple of years ago. I would look that up. Um, I think it was Steve Pratt, P-R-A-T-T, who wrote it. Because um, those guys are, are great. And uh, I haven't read the article in a couple of years, but I remember it was full of good advice. So um, David, my, you can email listen at the Uh It's also up at the website. Marcus shared it in the, in the chat. So you can find it there. Um, but I have a podcast called Royalty Melanin. I'm going to talk about social issues, life experiences, and any topics people want to hear. 
any advice on starting off a personal podcast? My, my comment for most podcasts would be this. Number one is that you should do something that you love and that you have fun with. That will always make it worth it, no matter what. Step two is if you do that and decide that your goal is to grow a large audience for that podcast, then you should really try and focus what you're trying to do and talk about on, and you should make that like surrounding like just one or two subjects and become the expert on those one or two subjects. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm just a guy, you know, like I've done this a bunch, but like, I'm certainly not the only like, uh, point of truth here. Um, like there are a thousand ways to do this and, you know, Joe Rogan exists and, and everybody else that, you know, does chat shows. Um, and they have billions of listeners, you know, make a show that you would want to hear, uh, you know, but I, I guess my, my point being like, if you're looking to, um, step one is, uh, just make the show that you want to hear that you would have fun making um step two is just realizing that if you're going to be really broad with the topics that you're going to cover then you're going to limit to uh you know for example with storybound like i could go to people and talk about uh different lists of book podcasts or something um if you're going to have like kind of a a chat show that covers every topic, then you're not that. You're going to be a little bit limited. Um, so if you're okay with that, then absolutely make this show something that like deals with everything under the sun. Um, but I, I do always caution people that they should try and kind of focus what they're covering a little bit. What was the email that they could reach you at? Was it listen at podglomerate.com? Yeah, listen at thepodglomerate.com. Oh, okay. Yeah podglomerate.com was taken and somebody wanted a few thousand bucks for it. So, so we, we got the podglomerate. Um, you know, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget there are more art of podcasting workshops coming up. And if you'd like to continue the conversation or have questions about today's workshop, you can join our discord. I'm going to drop a link for it. And also don't forget, we actually have blog recordings up on our website um, and full articles with resources and all that fun stuff related to the workshop today. Let's see, and I'll drop those. They should be in there. All right, well, Jeff, thank you. And thanks for giving us all that really great information. Thank you, Marcus, for helping me out today and hope to see you all at the next one. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody who came. We'll see you all next time. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye, everybody.